Good morning, Bill Carroll, Zenny 62 Media. And after a brief break, a brief theater break, uh, I am very proud to say that a theater company I helped co found when I was a graduate student at Illinois, Impact, M P A A C T Theater uh, at Chicago, just closed out its 31st, 31st uh, season as a producing entity with an amazing play, Dandelions, written by Tina Fakhra Dean, who I met when she was Tina Jordan as a 17 year old freshman. 30 two, 33, 33-ish years ago at University of Illinois. Uh, she is a noted playwright and also a professor at Oakton uh, in the northern suburbs of Chicago. But that's not why you came. But if you are into impact or in the theater at all, uh, www.mpaact.org, impact.org, amazing work, and you can check out the podcast plays. Now, the reason you came was to hear me talk football, so that's what I'm about to do. The Indianapolis Colts are a classic DND, draft and develop team. And when it works, wow, does it work. They've had several home runs in their time as a franchise. I mean, just in the last few years, going back to Andrew Luck, but even more recently, you know, Quentin Nelson and, of course, Michael Pittman Jr. and Jonathan Taylor, uh, Blackman, they've drafted extremely well. And when you're a draft and team, you have to, right? If you're a draft and develop team, you have to hit. And they hit more often than they miss. I'm not grading the 2023 draft because I don't believe in grading drafts uh, seconds, days, hours, weeks, whatever, after they happen. But I will talk about the 2020 draft. And I'll start with, well, the fact that they, of course, are picking in the second round. But boy, did they nail the second round. Uh, so in the second round, uh, with the pick they got from Washington, they picked Michael Pittman Jr., who... I called a, not even poor man's, I said working class man's, right? Blue collar uh, class man's version of Mike Evans. And then right back to back uh, with their next pick, pick uh, seven picks later, pick 41. <coughs> excuse me, they picked Jonathan Taylor, who I said at the time, and I still believe has HUFP, Hall of Fame potential. His combination of speed and power is incredibly rare, and he has a chance to literally make the Hall of Fame if he can remain healthy for another five or six years. Then, Julian Blackman with the pick they got at 85 from the Lions via the Eagles. A very good safety and a player that I believe will be a, a part of uh, the NFL for, you know, probably a decade plus. So we're talking uh, a triple, a home run, and I'd say a double, I guess, would be a way to describe uh, what you've got going with the next pick. So if you get out of the, you know, if you open a game with a uh, triple, a double, a triple, a home run, and a double, that means you've probably scored a couple runs. And that's what you want to do, uh, especially, like I said, as a draft and develop team, you know, to get starters and, and good football players, and in case of a couple of these, even stars, right out of the box when you're drafting. Now, in the middle to late rounds, it's not quite as crisp, clean, and clear that they're out there flat killing it. But let's just look. So you get, like I said, Flat killing it, just blowing it out of the water with those first few guys. Then, eh, you know, wander around in the wilderness a little bit. Uh, I get the attraction to Jacob Eason, but this is a guy that, you know, got beat out at Georgia, obviously, very famously, by a less talented Jake Fromm. Uh, you know, looked all right at Washington. I get the size, I get the bloodlines. You know, I, I saw Tony Eason when he was a player and watched him. Then they sort of righted the ship again with Danny Pinter. And while Danny Pinter might never be more than solid, good, you know, out there getting it done, he's a tough, smart, I don't know, I don't want to say scrappy. Scrappy always comes up feeling a little like a, you know, um, one of those backhanded compliments. <laughs> but, you know, he's a guy that starts seven games, played in another 30 games, uh, and has a touchdown, right? Uh, former tight end, if I remember correctly. Uh, can move around a little bit. Caught a, uh, a ball um, from Wentz uh, against the Jets. And was first team All-Mac. I was a big fan of his. I think that he continues to be a guy who can back up a couple of different positions on offense. And I think he'd eventually be asked to start. I think if he... I think he could be a starting center in the NFL. They, if you, you may want to have better options, but he's he's not bad at all. I like him. Uh, Rob Windsor, I was too high on coming out of Penn State, and I guess they were as well. But once again, you're talking about the sixth round. We're talking about you know pick number 193, I believe overall. So you can't nitpick the pick too much. 
uh, Rob Windsor, you know, did contribute a little, um, and then unfortunately has battled injuries the last few years. I believe he's on the XFL Vegas Vipers. Shout out to my friend Brock uh, roster, but he's on their reserve list as well, I believe. So I don't know if he's played on that level. He did have two tackles in his NFL career, so we'll call that a miss, right? We'll we'll call that a uh, an attempted bunt that didn't didn't come up. You know, you weren't able to make contact. Uh, then moving on, because they they still are doing really good work. I mean, Isaiah Rogers, right? Contributor, uh, a, a good player, a guy who's in NFL career. Um, you know, 90 tackles, uh, double digit pass deflections, three career interceptions, a forced fumble. Uh, three fumble recoveries and a very good return specialist. He's made some people's, you know, all pro list or all or at least all um, like Pro Bowl list or whatever. People, a person that's a threat to make the Pro Bowl as a return specialist. I'm gonna call that a solid double, maybe even a triple when you're talking about picking a contributor at pick 212, uh, pick they got from by the way the Patriots, Des Patman. Uh, he's a guy that's still sort of hanging around the league. I think he's playing. For for the bill, we're well, not playing for, it, but the bill signed him to a reserve futures contract. So a guy who's still sort of hanging around, I'll call that a fielder's choice. And then moving on to the next pick, when you are once again at the very, very end of the draft, Jordan Glasgow, though he's currently a free agent, was a guy who was in the running for a Pro Bowl as a special teamer. Uh, he's now, you know, looking for a job, but did contribute early in his career. And it's still young enough that he could catch on with the team. I'm going to call that, uh, you know, maybe let's call it a, a foul tip uh, that was, you know, another pitch is coming. Foul tip. But he was a good special teamer in the time that he was with the Colts. So I'm going to give this an A- minus as, as a draft for 2020. And I'm going to look real quick at the 2023, and then we'll look at the, the depth charts from the uh, 2020 and 2023. So... As I mentioned before, they are a classic draft and develop team. And they start with Anthony Richardson. If he works out, no one will even care about what happened the rest of the draft, probably. But uh, all the Cam Newton comparisons in the world, I see a little bit of David Garrard, the way more athletic, also in the way that he plays. Um, but he's a big, powerful athlete, 244 pounds, off the charts athlete, big arm, at times looked good on tape and at times, frankly, scared you on tape. It's a big question mark. Um, I'm a little more certain of what Julius Brents and Josh Downs bring to the table. I think Josh Downs ends up being in the running for all rookie. Uh, I think that he's going to be one of the top two or three receivers of his type, meaning slot to Z, smaller receiver types. He's going to be one of the best of those up there with guys that got drafted ahead of him. If he picked pick 79, there's guys who went 30, 40 picks, 50 picks ahead of him who are not, in my mind, better than he is. Uh, Julius Brents is a long, I mean, classic cloaked Seattle corner, uh, length, explosive. Uh, when he misses, he misses big, so he's sort of a high risk, high reward guy. Blake Freeland, off the, they like athletes because they drafted a bunch of freak athletes. Off the charts freak athlete. Uh, I think I compared him a little bit to Nick Solder, a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses. Long, not terribly strong in the upper body, uh, needs to work on bending, playing lower, but he's got off the charts athletic ability basically a power forward playing offensive tackle uh, and then in Aditomiwa Odebarie off the charts freak athlete a guy who at 288 or so pounds can run 449 like that doesn't even sound right when you say it uh, so he and and Anthony Richardson could go blow for blow as athletes which is nuts um, for both to say with both of them but he is an off the charts athlete Hasn't always produced. At times, has been shut down in constant. The way he was used is part of the issue. So using him will be important. Using the right way will be important. But uh, if he, if they hit on that pick, if they hit on three of those first four or five picks, like I said, people largely forget what's happening. But I love their next few picks. Darius Rush, also a project, but off the charts athlete at corner. And then here's the player I'm going to circle for a moment. I think that getting Daniel Scott at pick 158 will go down as one of the more intriguing and interesting uh, possible steals. I think he has a chance to become, maybe not this year, but a year from now, he's going to be pushing to be a starter. I think he's going to be playing sometimes in some of their dime back and, you know, in some of those settings we have, maybe three, uh, three corners. 
threw out three corners, three uh, safeties on the field. But he has played a little bit of corner in his life. He's played some nickel. Um, he can play either safety spot. He's incredibly versatile. He's got a terrific football brain. And shout out to my friend Zenny. He, of course, is a Cal Bear. But he's a terrific football player. I have some interview footage of him uh, on Zenny 62 Media. And he impressed me. And his testing was good, too. Will Mallory. Here's a guy that was one of the top uh, tight ends in high school football coming in to college. Never quite put it together at Miami. He's a... I guess not high risk because you're picking him at 162. So it's a low risk, high reward pick. If he ends up being a top level starter, once again, you've killed it. Uh, if he ends up being, you know, a third, fourth tight end, you don't feel too bad about it. Then we have Evan Hull and uh, Titus Leo. Um, two players I really like. Again, uh, Evan Hull is a no nonsense running back, a little bit of Alfred Morris ish uh, out of Northwestern, but with a little more Zuzu, a little more, you know. Um, I think quickness than, than Alfred Morris had, but still sort of a, like non no sense non no nonsense one cut back. Titus Leo, once again, a guy that's gonna take a year or two to become something, but he could become one of those where did he come from kind of steals, you know, like Matthew Judon was coming out of Grand Valley State. Then Jalen Jones, Texas A and M, another guy that was at one point talked about in the first three rounds. Uh, some things happened that didn't quite work out the way he wanted them to, them to but he's another guy who, if he if he puts it all together, will end up being a huge steal. And I'm going to close out with a player that I think might be their biggest steal. If this player becomes what I think he might become, which is a starting either right or left tackle in the NFL, I think he's a swing for a while, but he eventually becomes a starter, it's Jake Witt from Northern Michigan, who I think was one of the three or four best Division II prospects in the country from the GLIAC of the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, which is a very high level of Division II football. I know you may not watch much D2 football, but you should, first of all. There's more good players than you think. But this guy is one of the best athletes. And they may have the two of the most athletic. I, I, both of these guys, I think, were in the top five or so of, if you're into RAS, Relative Athletic Scoring, from um, my friend... Uh, oh, my gosh. I just had his name in my... Uh, it'll come back to me. Uh, Math Bomb. Um, at Math Bob on um, on Twitter, I always remember people's Twitter handles. And, um, oh, oh, it'll come back to me. But the point is that we're talking about guys with length and tremendous athletic ability in both those cases. If both those guys hit, along with obviously, people are going to talk about Richardson, but they have a chance to really make this team a lot better, a lot faster. And so, the depth chart as it stands. Is it better than it was in 2020? I think potentially the answer could be yes. So their 2020 depth chart uh, obviously looked radically different at some positions uh, and similar to others. So they had Philip Brothers, Jacoby Brissett, uh, the aforementioned Mr. Jacob Eason, and they also were trotting out, um, oh God, who's the other one I'm thinking of? Um, there's somebody else that they could have. Go, oh, Bill. Well, that was the first three, and then the fourth one may pop back in my head. Um, and then uh, the running backs, <laughs> quickly enough, they realized who Jonathan Taylor was. Uh, that didn't take, you know, once again, I used to grandma scouting for certain players where your grandma could just walk past, take a quick look, and say, oh, that guy's great. Um, that would be a, a case of grandma scouting because he was one of those players that just jumped out at you. Um, for me, at least, I, he was my top-rated running back with, you know, with no no room to spare. Like everybody, everybody else was way behind him. And uh, after that, you know, um, they had Jordan Wilkins, uh, Naeem Hunt. Well, Marlon Mack was, I guess, officially the starter at home for Game One, but soon they realized they had John the Taylor. There was Marlon Mack, uh, Naeem Hines, and Jordan Wilkins. Actually, that right, that's really good running back depth chart. They also at wide receiver had Ty Hilton, Michael Pittman Jr., Desmond Patton, Patman, uh, Paris Campbell, Zach Pascal, and Ashton Doolin. I think they definitely upgraded there. Uh, Jack Doyle, Moelle Cox, and Noah Togiai were their tight ends. And then they had Anthony Costanzo, Chaz Green at tackle, left tackle. Uh, Quentin Nelson, backed up by Danny Pinter. Uh, they had Mike Lewinsky, Ryan Kelly. Braden Smith and Raven Clark. And so, looking now at their current depth chart, 
and once again, you know, it's different now because they have more players on the roster than they will, you know, when they get to cuts and things like that. But their depth chart, I think, is definitely better at some positions. Now, it's still sort of a solve for X at quarterback, uh, as no one really knows uh, exactly what the future holds for them at quarterback, but they're hoping the future is the, the young Mr. Anthony Richardson. Uh, and then, <clears throat> obviously, other quarterbacks who are in the running there, they currently have, uh, or, you know, at the moment, uh, Garner Minshew is the day one, well, he predicted day one starter, and then Sam Ellinger after that. And then at running back, clearly Jonathan Taylor, uh, they also brought in Zach Moss by way of Buffalo as, a, I think, unrestricted free agent. Uh, Deion Jackson, who was a college free agent from Duke uh, two drafts ago. Evan Hull, pencil behind him. And then Jake Funk, another college free agent from Maryland from, I think, one draft ago for 20, last year. Then Alec Pierce, circle this name, right? If you're, especially if you're a dynasty fantasy person, if he's somehow available, snap him up. Michael Pittman Jr. is not available in most uh, <laughs> dynasty leagues for obvious reasons, but he's available in redraft, you know, so if you're somewhere in the third round and probably the middle of the third round maybe and you're thinking, you know, I have my, I took my wardship for one earlier. It's a great fantasy wardship for two in my opinion. Um, they have Ashton Doolin and Michael Strahan. I think this might be a bust out year for Michael Strahan uh, in like four wide receiver sets. He is essentially a raw, very raw, but bigger and maybe slightly more athletic version of Michael Pittman Jr., another big body, super, super athletic receiver. And then you have Vincent Smith from Limestone, another guy I loved in college, who once again was very raw, but very athletic. And then they have Malik Turner. And then guys battling to sort of make the roster include uh, Ethan Freya, uh, uh, Jawan Winfrey, also Cody Case, and uh, Xavier Scott. And then their uh, tight end room is Jelani Woods, another enormous freaky athlete. They have a thing for big freaky athletes. Morley Cox, still there. Shout out to him. Kyle Branson, who's Granson, who is the smaller, quicker sort of move tight end, who will be battling it out with Andrew Ogletree, who was another sort of raw, small school guy who's, you know, played offense and defense in his in his past as a collegiate. And they're still sort of figuring out what he can be, but he might be a practice squatter, might be a guy that doesn't make the team. And then Will Mallory's battling, battling for, another, for that third, fourth tight end spot with Kyle Granson. The offensive line, which was the strength of this team for so long, is now sort of in transition a little bit. But uh, Bernard Raymond, the uh, interesting Germ German um, player, is battling it out with Blake Freeland, who I think might end up winning that job, and with Carter O'Connell and uh, Matthew Vanderslice also behind the two of them, and he might, he's a college free agent who might end it on the practice squad. And Quentin Nelson, duh. And then uh, backing him up, guys like Arlington Hambright, who I mentioned when I talked about the Bears, uh, and then Ryan Kelly, who's a terrific center when healthy, uh, Wesley French, <coughs> and uh, Delonda Shipley, who's another one of those uh, developmental guys who might be on the practice squad, came over from another team's practice squad, I think Dallas's. Um, then you have Will Fries, Danny Pinter. Don't be surprised if my boy Danny Pinter wins that uh, right guard job. And then Emil uh, Ekior, who was a college free agent, who was a really great college free agent signing. A lot of people had him projected to go in the late fourth, early to mid fifth, you know, Maybe the sixth. Very few people had him projected outside the sixth round, so to get him as an undead free agent is really quite impressive. Then Braden Smith, Jordan Murray, and Jake Witt battling out for right tackle. I think Witt makes the team as a swing tackle. You heard it, I guess, here first. Um, and then <clears throat> jumping over to defense, uh, this is a team that trots out Quiddy Pay, uh, Taquan Lewis. Avery Gennard, I really like, I'm sorry, Gennard Avery, has to have a solo offense, who I really like. I think he makes the team. And then guys who are sort of in the, fighting it out for the, you know, like practice squad or last spots, maybe special teams are Rashad Berry. Um, then in the middle at tackle, they have at one side, uh, Grover Stewart, one of my small school guys, I liked him coming out. They have Taven Bryant, who's, I think I compared him to Trace Armstrong, sort of a, 
tweener between defensive end and, and tackle and a guy that, you know, has a shot to make the team. Eric Johnson, another small school guy. They're not afraid of small school players. And a guy I like. And then Caleb Sampson's a guy who's going to be fighting, trying to make the roster. Then, of course, the big free agent signing from San Francisco, Forrest Buckner, who immediately helped this team. If he and if they can get a package where he and <laughs> Adetoma at Aborie are playing next to each other, <clears throat> oh my, ouch. They have, um, we tell him in a game next to him, who's a really interesting player, and then Jamal Woods, college free agent, battling to try to make it. Samson Ekubon is at the right defensive end, and then they have Dayo uh, Adebigail at behind him, and then watch out for my friend, my guy said, watch out for my guy Titus Leo. Um, and then Khalid Kareem, who is one of those guys who's fighting, trying to make the roster, came over from Cincinnati. Uh, Zia Franklin starting at your weak linebacker, and... At the moment, um, it, there's a battle for that next spot after him between Liam Anderson, who's a college free agent who I liked, and he's battling it out with Grant Stewart. Then you have, um, of course, Shaquille uh, Leonard, right, formerly Darius, along with Grant Stewart, who's also backing up that position. And once and um, oh, right, right, right. Uh, also, you've got Cameron McGrone, who came over from New England, uh, who's battling it out also for Will or Mike. And Sagun Alubi, another guy, San Francisco player who's battling it out. Once again, part Will or Mike. Uh, so all the guys I've just mentioned are sort of, not not that it's the same nowadays, but there's less difference between a Mike and a Will than there used to be. And, of course, you play with two linebackers so often, uh, you want to get the best coverage players. So sometimes they'll choose between which of those guys is the better coverage guy when you are in a two, um, running, uh, two linebacker set, which is, frankly, probably over 50 in fact, it is definitely over 50% of your snaps, like 55, 60% of your snaps. Uh, then moving to the strong side, you've got EJ Speed, very solid player, and battling it out for the job behind him. You have JoJo Doman, who's very athletic. I think he has a good shot. And then um, Donovan Mouton after him. Then Julius Juju Brents is already penciled in as the left cornerback. So he has a chance to contribute right away. And then Dallas Flowers, a small school guy, not afraid of small school players, um, who's a college free agent backing him up from uh, last draft. Then Jalen Jones and uh, Kevin Tolliver II are all in that mix. Then Julius Blackman, uh, who's at strong safety. Nick Cross, the very athletic safety from Maryland, who I liked a lot coming out. I think he's going to see some time in those three, you know, those three uh, uh, big nickel, those uh, three safety sets. And then you've also got uh, Henry Black, Marceau, uh, Dabo is a guy that's fighting to try to hold on to a spot. Rodney Thomas is currently penciled in as free safety starter. Watch out for the aforementioned Daniel Scott to maybe take that job this season, if not maybe next. Trevor Dinbo and Aaron Maddox. And then moving over to the nickel, of course they have one of the better nickels in the last few years, I, I think, but certainly one of the best nickels in football right now. And Kenny Moore, and then behind him, Tony Brown, and then a college free agent, and Cole Coleman, who has a chance. Uh, probably a practice squad guy, at least initially. Uh, not too much time spent on special teams. Rigoberto Sanchez is, uh, you know, one of the more fun and interesting guys. Uh, big personality. We saw that at Georgia. Um, and then they have a solid long snapper in Luke Rhodes, who I believe is from William and Mary, if memory serves it correctly. So another small school player. And then at uh, punt return, you've got Isaiah McKenzie, who's very good. Josh Downs is going to push for some snaps there, either at... Uh, uh, maybe punt or kickoff. And then they also have Dallas Flowers, who's a very good uh, return specialist. He's going to be pushed a little bit by both the aforementioned Downs and maybe Isaiah Rogers. Um, and McKenzie um, are all guys who can contribute in the return game. And um, I don't think they have any sort of battle planned at any of those uh, special positions. Uh, I think they brought in one other place kicker, uh, Lucas Harvick. Um, but I, don't, I think he's just there to sort of take some of the load off of Sanchez. So uh, that is the Indianapolis Colts. Are they better? I think they are better at most positions than they were in 2020, uh, quarterback being the big question mark. So uh, if you like this or if you don't like it, let me know. But we'll move on to the next team next.